Ray, you know what makes me happy? I think I do, but I want you to tell me. Our season three sponsor, Smoke Sessions Barbecue. Oh my gosh, that makes me happy too. Yeah, you know, we visited this place a while back for the first time, and every time we make a trip down to Texas, we go out of our way to go to Roy City, Texas. Uh, I mean, it's like, what, an hour uh, east of the Dallas-Fort Worth area? It is. It's not that far out of the way at all. It's right off of I-30. Yeah, and dude, this is... I, I don't know how to describe how great this barbecue is. The brisket, the turkey, the pulled pork. I, I I have yet to have anything that wasn't just really, really darn good, man. And I got to tell, I got to tell everybody Wednesdays. That's the key, right? We, uh, yes. There's something special every Wednesday, Mike. Tell them about it. It's, it's the barbecue burrito. So, Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. It's, this thing, I, I watched it on Instagram or on Facebook. Uh, I've, I've watched it for like a couple of years before I actually got there on a Wednesday because, you know, you and I usually pop in like on a weekend. But we finally got there on a Wednesday and I got to have this burrito and it is out of this world. No, I agree, dude. It's life changing. It's like it's one of those burritos you don't realize will change the path of your life until you have it. And then the sun gets brighter, the clouds part, your belly gets full. And somewhere angels appear and just start singing to you. It's that kind of barbecue burrito. So Smoke Sessions Barbecue. Uh, you can find them on Facebook, Instagram. Uh, They're in Roy City, Texas. They're about to open a brick and mortar, a new brick and mortar spot there in Roy City. They're going to have some great craft beer and some of the best Texas barbecue you've ever had. Check them out. Follow them. And when you're in the area, stop by and tell them. Mike and Big Race at you from Craft Beer Bucket List. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Craft Beer Bucket List with Big Ray and Mike, where we review beers you have to try before you die. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another fantastic episode of Craft Beer Bucket List, where we review beers you have to try before you die. And uh, tonight is a little different. We are not drinking any beer. We're just not going to do it, Mike. Um, what the world's going on? What, why, why are we not drinking beer on a beer podcast? I, I've, I've decided I've, I'm never going to drink beer again. Um, you know, no, I don't no, want to be, call you to, a liar, but uh, I don't believe you. Uh, no, I'll be really honest with you. What I noticed is um, a lot of the... A lot of the cideries are making really good cider, so I've been trying them more, yeah. and I think okay. I'm gonna be con- I think I'm going to be converted. So is that? So just be. I'm not the brightest bulb in the box, Mike. That's no secret. But is from switching to beer to cider kind of like going from a meat eater to a vegan? Is there a parallel? Uh, maybe a vegetarian. I. Yeah. So um, I have this new. I, I haven't told you this, but I have this new. Uh, uh, resolution for this year is to eat less meat actually Um, okay and the meat i do eat i want to be locally sourced so uh maybe maybe i'm eating less meat maybe i'm drinking more cider and i'm not i'm not i'm not it's not a big deal you know i so in all no you know i mean we're joking around here but in all honesty i have been drinking more ciders and i've talked to you about doing a cider episode for a while now Yeah, we have talked about it for a while. And, you know, you've said, no, Mike, this is a crappier podcast. And I said, well, Ray, it's, it's also my podcast. I kind of want to do it. So that's kind of where I'm sitting at this, but so we finally did it, you know? uh, So this is our 15th episode for, uh, for season three. Um, After this episode, you and I actually are going to go on a little break. So um, this will air uh, in like June. And then we're yep. going to go on like a, a two month hiatus while we do another project for the Arkansas Brewers Guild. And I think that's, that's kind right. of a cool thing, right? Um, Absolutely it is. But I, I, so the thing is, is for our, for our episode before break, episode 15, I wanted to have a cider episode because I think they're an important part of the craft brewing scene. Number one, um, I think that more breweries are dipping into that uh, scene and I think it's valuable for a lot of reasons for health wise, you know, it's, it is gluten free. So it's got some other, you know, it's got some, and we'll, our guest today will have some more information about that. Cause I'm not a cider uh, expert. I'm not. 
Yeah. Um, I'm not either. Um, yeah. I won't pretend to be. I've had a good number of ciders, right? You know, we, we, even you and I have been to a couple of cideries um, in our travel. Did I say, is it called a cidery? Am I just being silly? No. Okay. I think, okay. I, I mean, every once in a while I get something right. It's rare. It's a rare bird, but on occasion yeah. I, get, I get it right. Um, but no, we, we've gone and, and sampled some ciders and even on my own, I, I get one on occasion. I like a change of pace. I like to, to dabble with some new flavors. Right. Yeah. And, uh, so I'm excited for that. Um, I'll, tell, I'll tell you, you what, what else. So, oh, oh God, God tell me. No, I was going to say, no, 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 do, do your social you media shout outs and then, uh, okay. then we'll move on to introduce our beers and our special guest. Cause you and yes. I can talk about this cider versus beer for a long time and it's we we can but i don't want to do that what i do want to do is give a huge shout out to drinks with mary thank you so much for all the the positivity and the likes and the interaction on on instagram as well as bevy buddy thank you so much for uh, all your interaction and, and being there to support what we do and also pinpoint oklahoma so thank you all so much we appreciate you guys uh for all of you guys listening pull over, get out your phone, follow these guys and be like, Hey, yay. I like your stuff too. But in the least creepy way possible, because you, you don't want to be that person. Just uh, show support without being weird, please. Yeah. And so, you know, every episode this season, we're giving away a little giveaway, a little sticker giveaway. And yeah. while they don't have anything in cans quite yet, I was able to score us some uh, stickers from the Oklahoma Cider Company. Um, which is Sweet. in Oklahoma City, and I'm not even sure. I'm not, I don't know exactly when they opened, uh, but they're so they're super new, is what I'm saying. Um, right. And so I reached out to them. I said, "Hey, we're having a cider episode, and uh, I'd like to give away some stickers." Um, they said, "Heck yes!" And so that's our sticker giveaway. So if you want a, a free sticker from the Oklahoma Cider Company, um, you've got to send us a message on Instagram saying, "Hey, I'd like one of those free stickers." As long as we got them, we're going to send them out. You'll get a sticker in the mail from Craft Beer Bucket List. Or, you know, it's a Oklahoma Cider Company sticker from Craft Beer Bucket List. But that's it. That's all you got to do. Uh, easy That easy. And we won't share your name or address with anybody but the, you know, the hackers over in Russia. That's it. Oh, God. Uh, yeah. What? So, yeah. So, I thought it was the Ukraine. When did we switch to Russia for that? I don't know, man. Oh, God. It's a good right. thing we're Russia both Russia seems eating. more intimidating to me. No, fair uh, enough. Yeah. So, yeah. but Mike, we have a special guest. She's been so patient hanging out in the background. I, I, I feel like you should introduce her. Yeah. So she's kind of a big deal, right? Yeah. I mean, in my book, so she we is. don't want to keep I her like waiting. Her. I think she's cool. Uh, so today, uh, our special guest is Taz from A Girl with a Cider Review. Um, she operates the Instagram page, uh, Girl with a Cider Review, and it's on Facebook. She's a Canadian cider rep for Cider Scene, and she writes for Wines and Niagara. Uh, she loves ciders and she shares them uh, on her, across her social media outlets in various ways, whether it's posting or live streaming. So it's really, really awesome that we were able to score her as a guest. Uh, I, I feel like we got a slam dunk on this one. So I want to welcome to the podcast, Taz from Girl with a Cider Review. How you doing? Hi, I'm great. How are you? I'm doing really well. Are you pumped about trying some cider tonight? I am super pumped. Well, so before we jump into what ciders we got, um, tell us a little bit about what you've got going on recently with uh, with, with all your things you're doing. You're doing a, a lot of stuff. Yeah, <laughs> so many things. It's always keeping me busy. So I am Taz. Uh, I operate Girl with a Cider Review, mostly on Instagram. I do have a Facebook page, uh, a Twitter page and now TikTok as well, which is like a big growing video thing. <laughs> but uh, that one takes a bit more time. So I'm focusing mainly on Instagram because they have similar things in terms of videos on there. I review ciders. Um, I'm based out of Ontario, Canada. And um, mostly my cider reviews include like photos and the video portion that's my favorite part of it and makes it kind of unique so I'm always doing strange and exciting things while reviewing ciders um, and yeah like uh, Mike mentioned I am a writer for Wines and Niagara and Cider Scene and I'm Cider Scene's uh, Canadian rep so I try to try as many Canadian ciders as possible um, keeps me busy and my cider storage very full 
Uh, <laughs> but also I run a Instagram live chat called Cider and Life. So I run that weekly with industry professionals. So either cider makers or brewers or winemakers or even reviewers like myself, just to connect with others and share their stories because everyone is passionate about what they do for a reason. I want to find out what that is. So that's something that I've been doing that's fairly new. And then the other project I'm juggling is uh, the No Apologies Project, which came about Back in December 2020, um, there was a uh, sexist comment made towards women in our industry. And so I created that project in hopes to create a safer uh, environment for the women in cider and all of the drink industry. And I think growing that, which is what I've been doing, is super relevant, especially right now with so many things happening in the uh, beer industry, which are really important for people to be having a look at and recognizing and addressing. So those are some of the things I got going on, but uh, anything cider, I'm super interested and yeah, definitely check, look, take a look at uh, some of my pages if you want to check it out. Excellent. Yeah. And I've caught a couple of uh, her live streams uh, <laughs> on occasion, right? Like I say a couple, I've caught more than a couple. And I, th I think what's really fun to listen to, in all honesty, is the marketing piece. And I, and I know that's maybe the the dork or the 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 geekier stuff. But like when when some of your folks that you have on the the industry professionals talk about marketing and hit you know all the ins and outs of the cider, the marketing aspect of cider, I've learned quite a bit. And I think that's super cool. So, um, you know, for for whatever reason. Um, you know, I just find that super interesting, more interesting than some of the other stuff. Like I, I like hearing about the beer, the cider, I almost said the beer, <laughs> the cider flavors and the different things they're doing. But, you know, it's like the, uh, you, I forget, it was a while back, but you had somebody that was on, that had been uh, a beer rep for a distribution company and then had worked in the cider industry for uh, events and marketing. And she just had an incredible amount of knowledge and it just blew my mind that like, how much I learned from her in, you know, like 20, 30 minutes or whatever it was. So it was really cool. Thanks. Uh, yeah. Thanks for watching so many cool stuff on there. And on occasion, you'll see me try beer if you want to see something real interesting. <laughs> 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 but uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Yeah, no problem. Uh, well, again, we appreciate you coming on here. I know we got to get to the tasting portion of this podcast. So to, to let the listeners know, we've got three different ciders we're going to try. Ray's going to try the super fancy cider from Anthem Brewing out of Oklahoma City. I'll be trying the original dry from Locust, which, which has several different uh, locations I found out. But um, the one I thought, I thought it was a Texas beer and, or a Texas cider. And come to find out they have uh, their main offices of Washington. Um, so I learned a little bit and then, uh, Taz is going to be having, uh, the has cap and honey. Did I say that right? From coffin Ridge. And, um, it, it has an interesting, uh, Co coffin Ridge is pretty interesting. I found some different stuff out about it too. So, um, so yeah, that's it. Uh, who, I think Taz should go first as far as you know, <laughs> taking an initial sip. I agree. Um, okay. So. No pressure. <laughs> So tonight I'm trying, as you said, the Coffin Ridge Hascap and Honey Cider. Um, this one, they, I don't think they ever put it out for distribution. You could buy it directly from the cider itself, but it didn't exactly make it to our liquor stores. Super hard to do that. But I do have it in a quite a large bottle. Um, it is a bright red um, berry color. And... I am going to try it. <laughs> I'm trying oh, sorry. To think I, I was on, I was on mute when I said, do it, do it. I was like, yeah, do it, do it. Yeah. Yes. And, uh, let me see what else I could tell you about it before I <laughs> drink it, but it's 6% ABV and, mm -hmm. um, it's made with Hascap, which I can tell you a little bit about what Hascap is. No one really knows too much about it. It is a type of berry. It uh, oh. grows in the wild. And I think, um, only a couple places, Canada being one of them. I think Russia and Japan are some of the others. Um, it's supposedly tart like a raspberry, but it looks like a 
kind of a stretched out blueberry grape hybrid. It's, it's kind of really weird looking, <laughs> um, but it's really, it's quite resilient in uh, different temperatures. So that's why it's kind of good here in Canada. So if the temperature goes a little bit too low, it's still potentially going to make it. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, it's a really interesting flavor and cider. So this one's mixed with a bit of wildflower honey and Georgian Bay apples as well. And then uh, for the listeners, you can find out you can find out more by following Coffin Ridge. It's just like a coffin in a ridge at Coffin Ridge on uh, Instagram and whatnot. So you can go check them. It's the Coffin Ridge Boutique Winery, right? Yes. Yeah, they are a winery. They mainly do uh, wine, but they started cider um, a little bit after they opened. They have like four or five that uh, are canned that you can buy and then some other ones if you go up there. All right, so Ray, I want you to talk about what you're drinking tonight, the Super Fancy from Anthem. Yeah, so you literally just said exactly what I was going to say, Mike. This is a cider I haven't tried yet, so I don't have a whole lot to say about it yet. But I do, in fact, have the Super Fancy Apple Cider from Anthem Brewing out of Oklahoma City. Is uh, is this the part where I get to open my can? Yeah. I think you opened yours already. You, you got ahead of the game here, but that's that's all right. So you can't beat me with the can cracking this time if uh, no one sure. else gets to hear it. Yeah, so you I, win. I get to win by default. That sounded pretty good. All right, I'll take that. Yeah. So, so you already cracked into yours, Mike. Why don't you tell us a little bit about the, the cider itself? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So I've got the Locust Cider. Um, and, and as I was mentioning, they have several different locations. I originally thought they were from Texas. Um, but they were actually originally from Washington. They have, uh, uh, places to brew in Texas and Colorado as well. Um, I'm trying the original dry. It's a uh, 6%. Uh, you know, it, it's, 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 uh, well, so this is a good place to talk to Taz about this. So it's, it's gluten-free is what I was about to say. And I feel like cider folks are going to laugh because I think they're all gluten-free. Mostly, yeah. Some of them, depending on how they make them, there's only a couple that haven't been. It's because they've added, uh, forget what they've added to it, but just because they're trying to make like a fancy flavor and it uh, made it not gluten free, but uh, most of them are, yeah. And and so I, I, as I was talking about this, I was like gluten free. I was like, oh, you know what? I think they're all gluten free. So I'm going to sound like <laughs> a complete noob when I say this. But so, uh, so I, I found I found this in a can, and I was immediately drawn to it. And I'm going to have to post this on our Instagram and Facebook and all that. This can is legit awesome looking. Um, this may be the, one of the coolest cans I've seen in a long time, but it tastes great. That's what I'll say. It tastes great. It's very crisp. Um, you know, it's it's got that. Um, so it's got so it's got a little uh, tastes a little bit of pineapple in it. Uh, so I don't know uh, what that's about because uh, I didn't read anywhere on it this so it says it's made with washington apples so i don't know um maybe taz can help us on that with the tasting notes why i'm tasting a little pineapple but it tastes great that's what i'll say i love it uh it's dry and i like that i like the finish on it it's got good carbonation about it um it reminds me like a um oh ray 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 what was that wine electra remember that wine electra Oh, dude, yeah. Uh, T- yes, Taz, orange have you ever had Electra? No, but it sounds oh good. Oh, my. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 this is what that, it just like hit me. That's what it reminds me of is that Electra. I'm going to have to find this and send uh, Taz a link to it. Um, I don't know if you can get it up in Canada. I, I know that it's hard to ship stuff there because it's winter all the time. But, um, <laughs> 100% why. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> But uh, no, but it's so this this is really good. Uh, I've never had it before, and I really like it. So that's what I'll say. Uh, anyway, I'm gonna I'm gonna let you let you talk, Ray. So a, a bit of a caveat. So the the orange moose cat you just talked about by Electra is a, a fantastic Moscato, and I think you introduced that to me maybe 15 years ago. But you know, for the last 10 consecutive years, Mike, I've used that. Um, in my, as part of my bacon wrapped turkey recipe, I, uh, you know, you, I don't know, you've never been to my house at Thanksgiving to try it. You just see the pictures on Facebook every year, yeah. but I soak craisins and Fuji apples in Moscato for two days 
with some brown sugar and craisins, and that's what I stuff into the turkey before I wrap the whole thing in bacon. Sounds like a lot of work. It is, but dude, it is so worth it. So worth it. Uh, so, but anyway, yeah. Tangent. Uh, let me yeah. get back to my my cider, which is uh, surprisingly complex. I did oh. not expect um, what I'm getting out of this. I, mean, I always have big expectations for Anthem. They consistently deliver some pretty badass beers. But I'm like, you know what? These guys have got some skills with the cider. Um, I expected, you know, like a, a Red's Apple Ale, you know, and he just kind of get like one consistent flavor the whole time. And it's just like, uh, I'll say I don't like those. I don't. For me, the, the flavor is too light, but you get the same apple flavor throughout. Here, I, I'm getting several um, throughout the drink. There's like a, a nice sweet apple up front, right? Um, it has a dry finish, but it's also tart like a Granny Smith. Um, so I, I don't know what apples are using, but there's a definite sweet to tart as you drink it. And I'm like, that's kind of cool. Uh, I totally didn't expect that from this. Um, there's some other nice fruity notes in here with it. So it has a subtle sweetness, but it's not too much. Um, so it's kind of enjoyable. Uh, it has a dry finish, which which I expected. And so you just get all of these things in, in one drink and it's like, damn, this is, this is really good. So that's the super fancy by Anthem Brewing. Uh, yeah. And it's 7.7% ABV. And if you, if you want to look them up, they're at Anthem Brewing on across all their social media platforms. Taz, what are you thinking about yours over there? All right. Well, I'm thinking, I think my favorite part about it is the color because in terms of the taste, I don't think it, I don't know, it's super unique as well. So the Hascap makes it super tart um, in the start. It, it's a very dry cider, so you're not going to be getting any sweetness really out of this, uh, which is surprising because there is added wildflower honey, and you only get that in the finish, the tiniest bit. And it comes across a little floral to me, opposed to sweet. And I'm not too big on floral notes in cider. Sometimes they've surprised me, I will admit, but not my favorite. Um, but I, I would say overall, it's just quite tart and sharp tasting. Um, but the color is gorgeous, and it is very unique. I will give it that. Um, for dry lovers, I think that this would be a cool thing to try. Well, so when they talk about wildflower honey, do you know, uh, that can mean a lot of different things. Do you know when that, do you know any more about that? Or is it just like locally sourced, I guess is what I'm asking? Yeah, usually um, a lot of the areas that produce like the wine growing or cider producing areas, they use local wildflower honey or local honey, whatever, wherever they get it from, um, close by in their area. And they just, uh, add those ingredients, um, to the ciders. That's, that's about as much as I know about that, but usually they're local. Um, yeah. yeah. That's cool. Well, that's, you know, that's something I like about a lot of the, what I've, what I've found is it's more prevalent in the cider community is trying to stay local with ingredients. And I think that's a little bit because of the, uh, the grains are harder to grow in some areas for beer. Um, but with, with a lot of the cider stuff is, you know, th th there's a lot, there's a big movement toward that local, uh, ingredient stuff, um, yeah. which I think is super cool. But yeah, hundred percent. A lot of cideries, they're like really big on that. And some of them even have made like space on their own properties to just grow things themselves specifically for the cider, which is amazing. You know, my first, uh, you know, and I think like Ray, I'm thinking about like Red's hard apple and all that stuff, which I've had, but I, the first, the first real local cider I had is, uh, was a uh, pivot cider out of Lexington, Kentucky. And it was a, um, it tasted like an apple pie. It was so good. And that's what really started me down the road of trying more ciders. Um, and then there was another cidery called, uh, from, it's either One World Brewery or One World Beer out of Asheville, North Carolina. And they had a dry cider and I'd never had a dry cider. Uh, and I tasted it and I was like, 
this is really darn good. And so that, that's how my eyes came open. Ray, what was your first uh, good cider experience beyond like Reds or Mike's Hard Lemonade or whatever that crap you drink is? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I like to try everything, uh, you know, once. Um, so that's a tough question. You know, honestly, I, I want to say it was January of last year. So I'm, I don't have a whole lot of cider experience, right? Definitely not my strong suit, but we visited one in Charlotte. Um, it was, I forget the name of it. It was oh, like just up the road from old Mecklenburg. And uh, we popped in and I tried several ciders and all of them blew my mind. Cause to that point I hadn't had one that good, right? Um, but just the flavors that came through and, and the, and the finishes I thought were fantastic. And that was way above what I'd had from some of the run of the mill stuff you find at your local grocer, if you will, they're, you know, naturally distributed that really to, to that point been my only experience with it. So I wasn't a big fan, but once I had one that was craft made, you know, it's like, dude, there's, there's something more to this. I mean, just like craft beer. Same thing. You have to have that introduction or that gateway to get you to realize there's a lot better stuff out there. And uh, it kind of put me in a spot where I needed to, where I started to respect it more. Before I'm like, ciders, man, not my jam. I don't really want that. I, I, I have what I have. I like what I like. Um, but it got me to try other things. And uh, I'm glad that I did that, honestly. So good road cider works is what it was in Charlotte. Good. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. I'm glad you've got a memory. Taz, yeah. what was your yeah. f- first foray into cider? Like, which was the eye opening experience for you? Um,. <laughs> I'm trying to think because three years ago when I was starting out, it was really hard to actually find things in our liquor stores that were like a good selection. In terms of ciders, there was like very limited. There's like four or five maybe you could get. There was this um, there's this brand called Summersby, which they have a Canadian producer now. So um, but they're originally from Denmark. So they have a production site in Denmark and then they have one here in Canada now. It's just uh I'm trying to compare it to someone. I know Angry Orchard is another really big popular one in the United States. It's kind of just super sweet, like so sweet. It's like juice and it's not cidery tasting at all. And that's kind of where I started. But uh, after that experience, I started um, actually visiting cideries themselves and getting to know their products. And I was like, oh, like this is so much better than what we can buy in the liquor store. And then I started getting interested in craft cider and uh, the cideries that make it. And uh, there are so many new things that have opened up now in the past three years. And even in our liquor stores, there's a bigger selection. But I try to go to the cideries directly because, um, one, it's good to support local businesses, of course. And um, our government takes like a cut from the sales if they are sold in the liquor store. So it's just, it, it's upsetting for businesses that work super hard to um, make their product that so many of them are amazing. We just don't know about them. Uh, so kind of going down that path, um, is, is cider becoming uh, more prevalent in your area? Yeah, I, I wouldn't say like my area in particular, I guess. I, I mean, we're about a half an hour away from Toronto, so our big city. Um, in my area, there's like nothing in terms of cider because uh, it's also it's quite a big city as well. So there isn't exactly the land for that. But if you go half an hour out in like any direction, you will hit a bunch of cideries or wineries, um, etc. But uh, it definitely is growing. I think this year, um, I think five or six new ones opened in Ontario itself, which is pretty cool. Um, I haven't tried them yet, but I'll have to give them a try but uh it's becoming more popular in terms of like people's preferences though for sure because so many people didn't even know that cider was a thing and they would just drink beer coolers and um now they're like oh i really like cider because there's so many options now so we kind of see like uh the change over time in that so i have to ask you a question yeah go ahead ray so you said something about drinking beer or drinking coolers. <laughs> yeah. So I'm curious, what what is a cooler? Um. So like, <laughs> those like super sweet. I'm trying to describe this in other words. Super sweet drinks that have like 
vodka in it. So something maybe like a Seagram drink or oh, kind of okay, like a wine cooler. Yeah, something like or that could be a wine cooler that. or like a lot of the times they have like an alcohol base. So it'd be like vodka and like some sort of fruit juice or something. Um, okay. Or rum or whatever they're doing, like a margarita cocktail or who knows what it could be. But if it's gotcha, sweet, gotcha. then yeah, we call it a cooler or something like Smirnoff ice or something like that. Um, okay, fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> Mike's Hard Lemonade. Yep. Yes. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> yeah. You know, so it's funny. She called it a cooler. And, and you're right, though. Like here, no matter what it is, they call it a wine cooler. Interesting. Yeah. Even, even, even though there's, yeah. So, because I've always even heard like it too. Even like Zima. Yeah. If anybody cooler. remembers that stuff from back yeah. in the day. Uh, I miss it. I miss, the, you know. Showing that, my age. Well, that's, <laughs> that's our high school drink. You know, we always thought we were cool. Um. So, Taz, have you had any, so going back to Coffin Ridge a little bit. Um, so have you had other ciders buy them? Uh, yes. So they have quite a few um, that are actually in cans and not massive bottles. So they have a hop cider. They have just an original, they're like flagship dry apple cider. Um, they have, they have another one I have in a bottle. It's like a chai spiced, but my favorite one by them is uh, their pink cider. They call it just a, coffin ridge pink <laughs> but it's a raspberry cider and it's really good um it's not super sweet or anything but it's perfectly balanced and you get a nice like non-artificial raspberry taste so that's kind of why i liked it doesn't taste like syrup um but that one's my favorite from them i think sound like they go and, and they, they've got a lot of different wines as well they do, and <laughs> they have such funny names. Like they have a red wine; it's called Back from the Dead Red. Um, That's cool. I laugh at it every time I see it because they're trying to be on theme. <laughs> yeah, right. The uh, so yeah, I just wanted. I, I was wondering if they had produced other stuff and like what mm-hmm. you'd had and whatnot. So I think what we've done is we've come to the time where we rate what we're drinking, and then we got to pair it with a song. All right. And uh, <laughs> this is one of my favorite parts of this. So. Ray, we got to let the guests go first, right? Oh my God. Um, if she wants to, I, oh, I feel like so we, yeah, we we'll, put her, we yeah. put her under the, under the gun here. So if I'm you don't ready. want to go first, Daz, uh, if you're ready though, oh, add, I'm a hundred percent ready. I've been Woo! working on Look this. Look at her go. <laughs> yes, yes, excellent. Let's All let's right. hear what you got. So, um, what do I do first? <laughs> do I give the number first? Yeah, yes. let's give, let's get your rating first. Okay, I think I'm going to give it a five. I Ooh, think. okay. Just because... Five out I, of ten? Yeah, it's, okay. it's like fairly decent, just not my thing. And it was a little too dry for me. Um, and I really, really like tart ciders. They're one of my favorite things. But when the cider's super dry and tart, it just leaves like a very, I don't know, chalky taste in your mouth, kind of like super dry. Yeah. Um, drying out your palate and uh yeah so i think a five for me because it's not like horrible it's just not my style i guess yeah that's okay no, that's fair yeah and then uh what's do you have a song picked out that you would pair with this because <laughs> this is gonna sound weird i i couldn't think of one for like the flavor but i thought of one for coffin ridge <laughs> sure yeah it's whatever um, whatever works uh laid to rest by lamb of god Oh, I don't know. Taz <laughs> knows how to rock out. Like, yeah, you should have seen me back in my high school days. <laughs> oh, man. Were you, were you one of the girls that jumped in the mosh pit? Was that you? I was too tiny. I thought about it, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> my death enough. would have come soon. <laughs> man. So if Ray knows that song, I'll have to look it up. Okay. Yeah, I'll do it. All right, this you is, do this it is in awesome. the middle of the night really loud. Yeah. Volume, yeah. I, I, I don't stay up in the middle of the night too often. <laughs> I'll do it to wake up. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Brave soul. <laughs> well, yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Uh, no, that's one of the parts I like, actually, because when we talk, even Ray, like, he, he'll rattle off songs. I'm like, I have no idea who that is. I'm going to look that up. <laughs> so. That's probably going to happen to you again tonight, Mike. I'm, I'm willing to bet you don't know this song. I'm, I've, I've got a song for my cider here. Right, well, so Ray, you're next. What uh, what right. rating would you give your cider? And then 
What's your song? Yeah, so I, I give this rating a lot uh, because we happen to find a lot of good beers, right? So I, I am surprisingly, and I, I, I knew I figured I'd like this because it came from Anthem. I didn't realize how much I would like it and how happy I am to know I have five more of these in my beer fridge, like five feet to my right. I'm pointing at it. No, everyone listening is going to be like, what the hell is he pointing at? But I'm pointing at my beer fridge in my home office with more of these. And I'm glad I have them. Uh, you again, 7.7% ABV. It's a little more boozy than I expected, but you really don't get that. It, it doesn't translate in the flavor. And I still can't get over the, the tartness at the end with the sweet apple up front. So I'm just digging this. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to give this an eight out of 10. Um, so Huge kudos to Anthem for me on this. Um, this is, is setting the hook in a little deeper for, for me to want more ciders. Especially, I, I haven't had a raspberry cider either. I'm glad that you said that because <laughs> now I want to go find some, right? So so thank you um, for that. But my song for this is called uh, Astronaut in the Ocean. I know that one. <laughs> <laughs> So I, I caught myself, or I was drinking this, so I was kind of bobbing my head like, yeah, I really like this. And then I caught myself like bobbing my head to the beat of this song. And I don't know the words to it, but I, I hear it on the radio sometimes, on, on whether it be on, on Pandora or satellite radio, and I'll turn it up like, oh, yeah, and I'll act like I'm cool and I know how to dance. And I was bobbing my head to the beat of that, and a song popped in my head. And I, I feel like it totally fits my mood, which is a super good one right now. So who sings astronaut in the ocean i want to say is it lone lone wolf i think lone um wolf. that's uh, Mast wolf i think Mast wolf it? yes thank yeah. you Mast <laughs> wolf oh okay yeah so if you haven't heard that mike you should totally check out that track and join the cool kids well, well, club. Well, i've got i've got two to listen to waka waka yeah lone, lone wolf is uh the nickname for chuck norris right <laughs> so. oh my gosh ninja mike over here no chuck norris mike Chuck Norris. I'm, I'm, okay. a Chuck, I'm a Chuck Norris understudy. He's my, he's one of my he's one of my heroes. He's a real life superhero, Ray. It's true. Hey, you know Chuck Norris you know, can blow bubbles with beef jerky. Good grief! Uh, it's so science. I'm gonna move, yeah, Full I'm fact. Science. Yeah. He he doesn't do push ups. Yeah, he pushes the earth down. That's right. Um, yeah. Taz, do you is that, was that a thing up where you're at? All these Chuck Norris jokes. At one point, yeah. I can't yeah, remember when, but I remember I have no idea why it wasn't stopping. <laughs> <laughs> so I met Chuck Norris, like, what, two years ago? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> and he sincerely was one of the nicest guys I've ever met because uh, I had my two little girls with me, and he was like, he was like, you you know, like, you know, they're, you know, all little girls are kind of cute anyway, but he was just like, <laughs> you are adorable um, what are you going to be when you're, I mean, like, just like talking to him. I'm like, Hey dude, I'm the one that paid to meet you. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, no, he was super nice. Uh, was really, really kind. Uh, you know, uh, we went to a comic con to meet him and, uh, super awesome. Anyway. So, uh, I'm going to get to my beer. I had the, uh, the locust original dry locust cider, original dry. I'm going to get a, a seven and a half out of 10. I thought it was good. Uh, I think it's worth drinking again. Um, it didn't wow me, so I didn't, you know, I didn't say wowza or anything like that. Um, so I'm going to just give it a seven and a half. I think that's respectable. Um, so uh, the song that kept playing in my head while I was kind of drinking it was the Pearl Jam song, Just Breathe. Um, so I'm, that's what I'm going to pick. I'm going to pick Pearl Jam, Just Breathe. Um, but as y'all were talking, I was like, man, should I pick a country song just to be uh, opposite, you know? <laughs> So anyway, I had I had a country backup, but then I was like, you know what? I, I really like that Pearl Jam song, so I'm gonna stay with that. And uh, Ray knows I've I've had a Pearl Jam thing for a while. I think they're pretty rocking. Well, so. Price since late 1995, bro. Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, but, long but time. I, yeah, it's you know, that's about. They were probably they probably came out in the early 90s, right? I believe so. Yeah. yeah. So anyway. So per brand, just breathe. So uh, we're gonna we're about to go to a break, and then we'll come back with a Q and A uh, with a girl with a side of review. But to to kind of recap here, um, Taz was drinking the Coffin Ridge Has Cap and Honey. Uh, it sits at six percent ABV. She gave she wanted to pair it with 
laid to rest by the name of God. Did I get that right? And then um, she gave it a five out of 10. Uh, needs a little work, um, a couple of things. Ray had the Anthem super fancy. Um, he gave it an eight out of 10. And he's going to pair it with Astronaut in the Ocean by Mass Wolf. Is, was that right, Ray? And then that is correct. I followed it up with uh, Locust uh, Original Dry. I gave it a seven and a half out of 10. And we're going to pair it with that with Pearl Jam's song, Just Breathe. And we'll be right back after this break with a little Q&A. Hey, this is Big Ray, and I am proud to announce another one of our Season 3 sponsors, Dronicle LLC, based right out of Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. Dronicle is one of the premier aerial photography and videography companies that you'll find in all of Northeast Oklahoma. From high-resolution stills to 4K quality video, Find Dronicle on Facebook.com slash Dronicle, D-R-O-N-E-O-C-L-E. If you don't need any drone work done, give them a follow, like their work, and tell all your friends, dude, Dronicle sponsors my favorite craft beer podcast, Craft Beer Bucket List. All right. Welcome back from the break. Uh, you know, usually Ray welcomes us back from the break, and I said, I want to welcome us back from the break. Ray gets to do it all the time. I'm kind of irritated about it. So I'm doing it now. From now on, I'll be welcoming us back from the break, at least for this episode. Um, so, te- <laughs> yeah. So, all right. Yeah, you know, uh, I, you probably all take it back, and that's okay. Um, you're really, you're really boisterous. You know, what I'm I saying? am. I'm very boisterous. Um, I'm not. I'm. I'm more. Is chill the right thing? Am I more chill? Um, you know, I, I'm. I was gonna say mundane, but I think we should go with chill. <laughs> that just sounds better. Mundane. I know. I'm. Uh, I'm sorry, Mike. I love you, bro. No, it's, I've had my students call me a curmudgeon. Oh so, wow! Yeah. So you know. At least they used a five dollar word, Mike. I just right. said mundane. Yeah. Well, so we we've got Taz from yes. Girl with the Cider Review with us, and this is where so we tried our we tried our ciders, and we pretty much uh, decided that we're going to start drinking more cider, Ray. Uh, and 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 Taz has been an important piece of that because. You know, she helped me convince you to do a cider special um, That's right. or a spider epi- sp- cider episode. Get my merds mixed up again. Um, so I, this is so this is like the Q and A portion because we've 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 had our ciders. I've still got a little bit left. I'm going to continue on. But Taz, I've so the question I've got is: we, we know you're involved with cider, and you know. You do a lot of cool things with that. What kind of stuff do you do for fun other than cider? Yeah, that's a great question because now most of my free fun time is cider related. But I, I did used to have other hobbies. and <laughs> I still engage in those sometimes. So I'm pretty big on like outdoorsy stuff. So I like doing hikes, uh, mountain biking, swimming, um, just hanging out outside, going for walks, things like that. Um I also am really into music. I used to be in a band back in the day, I guess uh, I sing, but um, I don't really do that too much anymore. Before COVID uh, and everything, I was doing some small open mics with friends and that was really nice, um, just at like local bars and coffee shops and things like that. Um, but besides that, like I, I like writing, reading, um, but those are some of my favorite things also love to bake (laughs) so that's a that's a fun thing i've been trying to experiment making dessert with cider in them so i'm trying to see how that goes (laughs) um so i i think this is a time where you're obligated to sing something for us to let us hear you sing um i'm not saying it so long i don't think i'm ready (laughs) great ray knows my favorite song to sing uh, yes, I do. It involves Elvis Presley and chicken wings. It's oh, fantastic. Clown, yeah. <laughs> so, <One> so <laughs> what's that? One day I will sing. <laughs> All right. Well, we we it's we're gonna put it on the list. I'm gonna come All back right. to. You. I'm gonna come back in like two weeks. I'm gonna message you and be like, hey, okay. listen. Uh, yeah. So if you, <laughs> I won't I won't make her listen to me sing. <laughs> um, but it. I may drop. Golly, I, I gotta say, do it, Mike. Do, do, don't be shy. Just do it. As far as what? 
Just sing. Just sing us a couple bars, man. Just, just oh, go. from the Clown Vest song? Yeah, man. All right. Jesus Christ eating on a chicken wing. Jesus Christ eating on a chicken wing. There you go. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Round of applause. All right, all right. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know. Wow. 10 out of 10. Yeah, 10 out of 10. Absolutely. Very, very, very nice. I appreciate it, yeah. Uh, so this is, there's this clown on, he has a YouTube channel and, uh, he dressed, it's a Elvis clown and he, he does these, uh, one hour specials at the end of the week. And anyway, he has a song called Jesus Christ eating on a chicken wing and it's ridiculous. Uh, makes no sense really. Um, but it's great. So it's, you know, uh, I, I, a friend sent it to me. Uh, I played it for my kiddos. Uh, we love it. So. Anyway, all right, Ray, your turn. Yeah, so you mentioned that you're a you like enjoy baking. Um, me being a, a foodie, I'm curious, what is your favorite thing to bake? Ooh, um, I'm trying to think. I like apple crumble. That's oh, one of my favorite yeah. things. <laughs> I know cider. Like now, I want one. So, oh my yeah, gosh, that's my favorite. Um, what else do I like to make? Yeah, I like like crumbles or pies. Uh, there's this thing that <laughs> this, it's super simple, but it's called Jello cake. But because it's like the Jello uh, mix, but it's in like right? um like whip. You mix it with whipped cream and you put it in a pie crust, and it's really nice in summer. Kind of like a coconut uh, cream pie or banana cream pie, but it's flavored to whatever Jello you pick. It's super simple, but it's really good. That's not like baking, and anyone can do that, but recommend trying it if oh you... dude they're they're fun to eat i i yeah. enjoy them <laughs> i do so and, and on the subject of food um you may or may not indulge but i'm curious what your favorite donut is tim hortons oh okay um <laughs> <laughs> let me think. the funny thing about donuts is i don't really like donuts and that, that's super unpopular so many people like donuts and i don't know but at tim hortons i think probably ooh, like Boston cream or like the oh. jelly, the jam filled ones. Those ones right? are like, yeah. Those are so good. Like I have yeah. eaten many donuts in my life from all over the United States. I get to travel a lot for my day job. And uh, I believe that, that Tim Hortons is among the sweetest donuts I've ever had oh, in my yes. life. Like, <laughs> oh my God, sweet. <laughs> But you, <laughs> but you kind of need it to cut through their their coffee because they have some pretty strong <laughs> coffee. It's like who, so yeah. you get straight woke up. I, woke up in the morning. It's just like mm. so. I get I get down on some Tim Hortons and um and I didn't realize I know they're a big Canadian chain, but they're all over Maine. Um, so it's e super easy just about anywhere in Maine to get to a Tim Hortons. I believe there's more of those than there are, you know, Starbucks or Dunkin' Donuts in a lot of wow. places. Yeah. So I was happy to to stumble on those. I'm like, oh, I've heard of these. I get to try it. Yay. And uh, so I had to ask you about it. So please, please don't be offended. I know it's a Canadian thing, but I, I, I was super curious. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm not a fan of donuts either. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That makes me feel a lot better. Yeah. However, at Tim Hortons, they have the small donuts, Timbits. I like those because they're smaller and not as like crazy sweet. I think that might be the ah, right on for me. Maybe. Fair enough. Maybe. <laughs> so, Taz, one of my favorite pictures uh, that you've ever posted on your Instagram was for with your mom for Mother's Day. Oh. Um, <laughs> it, it's so it was so sweet. And so, w the next question I have is, um, you know, what what are some wisdom that your mom has passed down to you that you'd pass down to somebody else or uh, something she said to you that really inspired you or something along those lines? Ooh, ah, that's a good question. Um, she, she's just a really hardworking and passionate person. And when, uh, when we were growing up, she stayed home to take care of myself and my siblings. Um, but once we got older and <laughs> I took care of them <laughs> because that's what the oldest sibling does, um, she was able to pursue her passion. She, um, 
she loves travel and uh, she ended up working as a flight attendant that she always wanted to do. Um, but obviously like having three kids, she had to stay home and take care of us. Um, Cause my dad was running his own business. So she chose to do that for the family. Um, but being able to pursue her own passion and work hard to do the things she loved, that was really inspiring to me. And of course, like different times and different things. Cause I know like for me, I, I really want to work and like pursue my passions always. Um, but she's really pushed uh, pursuing like our dreams. And I know that sounds cliche, but she, she always reminds us that uh, we should go after the things that we love. And um, she's also a very, very kind person. That's something I like to emulate everywhere. <laughs> so um, being kind to everyone and non-judgmental because um, everyone's going through something and being a, a just a good person, a good support is um, really important, especially nowadays. So those are some of the things that like, I take from her and I think that are important for everyone, really. Absolutely. Yeah. No, I love that. Mom, moms are special people. <laughs> they are, 100%. Ray, uh, that, that's the two questions I had written down. <laughs> All so, right, fair enough. I didn't know if you had any more. Um, We've got time for like maybe one or two more, I guess. One or two more, yeah. So it's something that that we like to do, kind of spur of the moment, just because you never know what you're going to get when you put somebody under pressure. But we've kind of bombarded you with questions. Have you got a random one for us? Oh no, I know, right? Um. If you could be any animal, what would you be and why? Take it away, Ray. <laughs> oh, man. Well, Mike thinks because <laughs> he so, needs uh, time. <laughs> yeah. So I would be a panda bear. Okay. Definitely. And I, I compare myself to a panda bear on occasion. Um, when people ask you, like, describe yourself, I'm like, I'm like a panda. They're, they're usually a little pudgy. Um, they like to sit down a lot. And if you look at them, they're oftentimes snacking, right? And those are all things that describe me. But if you ever try to hurt one of their children, they will straight rip off your face. <laughs> and they'll sit down and just start chewing on their bamboo again. They'll just go right back to their happy snack. And I feel like that's me. I'm pretty chill. I'm laid back. I'm a big teddy bear. I love to give people hugs. But if somebody tries to hurt my daughter, oh, game on. Right? And then uh, when it's all over, I'm going to go back to my Oreos or something. Just whatever I'm <laughs> snacking on. It's cool, you know? Just whatever. <laughs> so, like your turn. Yeah. So, I've actually done a couple of different workshops, like leadership workshops, where they they have you take inventory about things you do and what kind of ethical framework you adhere to, what kind of morals you do or do not have and whatnot. And so I've got a couple different answers from those workshops. Number one is a shark. Um, so sharks are, uh, you know, we have a lot of conceptions about sharks, but I guess uh, from these workshops, what I've list, what I've learned is sharks are like the no excuses animal uh, really is, you know, they, they work well with others. They, 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 they like to support others as long as you're doing what you're supposed to do. Um, and that, so I got that one out of one of the workshops is, you know, I'm, I may be a shark, like, uh, I'm, and, and they're very serious. Uh, so I also have been called a mama bird, uh, and mama birds, um, tend to care for people, care for the young until it's time for their young to be on their own. Then they're like, get the hell out. So they kick the bird out of the nest. It's either fly or die. I'll help you a little bit, but then you're on your own. So I've been called the mama bird. I think the best one I like for me is the, I'm just going to say like a Labrador retriever. I, I think that, um, I don't know, like Ray, Ray knows this. I don't, I don't get too hyped up about anything and I don't get too terribly depressed about anything. Right. No, it was even keel. Yeah. Uh, so like people are like, are you excited? I'm like, yeah, uh, sure. Right. But also like, are you super sad? No, I'm not. Uh, you know, uh, I've only been like super sad a couple of times and even then it was very short lived, you know? So, uh, I think, uh, Labrador 
retriever is probably what I'd go with. But I don't really have a good answer. I, I know that's terrible. What about you, Taz? Um, that, that's a hard one too. I think maybe something like um, I a dolphin um, <laughs> because they're kind of fun and um, they do share some personality traits with some humans, not all humans, I guess. Uh, they do display like selfless characteristics and altruism, and those are things that I like to um, say that I would <laughs> have. Um, I mean, but they they also have their uh, other side of that as well, dolphins. So, but I think they're pretty pretty cool. Um, probably pick that. But my favorite animal is a whale. But <laughs> I didn't want to pick that because I didn't think it made sense. <laughs> I, it's your it's your choice. I mean, you can pick whatever you want. I don't know. Besides, I don't know what I would share in common with a whale, yeah. <laughs> other than I like swimming. <laughs> Hey, pe- people like to well watch. Yeah. Um, so like, uh, you know, people watch you on uh, Instagram and whatnot. That so true. that's that's my best connection. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my my favorite, like- I think my favorite animal, in all honesty, is like a black bear. Now, I don't consider myself to be a black bear, but I think that's one of the coolest animals out there. So anyway. All right. So I know we have taken a long time. Taz, I want to say thank you for joining us. Uh, thank you for sharing uh, your local cider. Thank you for uh, letting us pester you some questions. Um, to recap, uh, Ray drank the Anthem Super Fancy. Um, he gave it a eight, an 8 out of 10, and he's going to pair it with Astronaut in the Ocean. And Taz had Hascap and Honey, a local cider, cider from Coffin Ridge. She's going to uh, listen to Laid to Rest by Limb of God, and uh, she gave it a 5 out of 10. I had the Locust uh, Cider, uh, Original Dry, sorry, Original Dry. I gave it a 7.5 out of 10, and I paired it with Just Breathe by Pearl Jam. Um, I, I, You know, I, I think that uh, for our first cider episode, I think this went really well. And I think uh, I'm going to talk Ray into doing a little bit more cider uh, here and there um, so that we can just – talk about it and explore it. I think there's a lot of good flavors out there. Um, but again, uh, I'll let Ray take us out with the outro, but Taz, thank you so much for joining us and you can find her at girl with a cider review. Um, she, again, she has, uh, Instagram, which is the primary one. And then she has Facebook, Twitter, and now she's super cool and hip with TikTok. <laughs> um, so again, Taz, thank you so much, Ray. I'll let you take it from here. Absolutely. So I've got to echo Mike. Thank you so much, Taz, for taking the time to hang out with us. Uh, we very much enjoyed having you on, uh, sharing your knowledge with us, and most importantly, your time. So everybody, if you would, check out her social medias. Mike already said it. I don't want to just kick a, a dead horse here. But check her stuff out. Give her a follow. Give her those thumbs up. Watch her live streams. They're super awesome. She's super knowledgeable, has a lot of great things to say. So in the meantime, while you're there, check out all the cideries that we featured tonight on this episode be sure to give them a thumbs up a like and a follow as well you don't have to be in the local area to support local it carries a lot of weight anytime that you visit their social media and interact with them while you're at it check us out as well you can find us at craft beer bucket list on facebook instagram and twitter if you listen to us on apple Podcasts, be sure to give us that five star rating and we love 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 to see your reviews whether we're doing good or bad we want to know we're awesome at what we do but we can always improve so anyway, guys, thank you so much. And uh, please, you know what? Don't drink and drive. Even if it's cider, don't do it. Please be responsible. But as always, do support local. And we will see you guys on another episode of Craft Beer Bucket List. Adios. Craft Beer Bucket List is partially supported by Red Dirt LLC. Red Dirt is a parks, recreation, and tourism services agency with the goal to provide the tools, information, and leadership to help guide, plan, and market your organization or business. Red Dirt provides media management, photography and videography, research and analysis, and overall management for excursions and experiences for your agency. Visit reddirt.us.